Hi everybody, welcome to Julie at Home and welcome to the first video of my curriculum series for the academic year 2023 to 2024. This coming year I will have a fifth grader, a third grader, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. In this first video I will be covering what we will be doing for family subjects that are aimed at my fifth and third graders. I do include the little or two when I can, but I will be talking about what I'm focusing on with them in some separate videos. I think I'll do a separate preschool and then toddler video later down the line. I will also be making videos specifically on curriculum choices for my fifth grader and for my third grader. And this year I'm intending on doing some deeper dives into a few of the subjects uh, including some flip throughs of curriculum we will be using. But as I said, this video is on family subjects, so let's get started. I'm going to start with history because it is a favorite of mine. So we're going to be using our Curiosity Chronicles curriculum again. Let me show you here. We uh, will mostly be using Snapshots of Early Modern History Volume 2 and hopefully getting into Modern Volume 1. This past year, we really spent some time on uh, in the Americas during colonial times. So 1600 to about 1800-ish colonial times, American Revolution, creating the Un United States government. And then we paused to do science and didn't really get back to history. So we're going to be going back into the 1700s a little bit to cover things in other parts of the world. Um, we're going to be touching on the French Revolution, Catherine the Great in Russia, um, also the Haitian Revolution, some of the revolutions in Latin America. We will also be learning about Victorian Britain and the westward expansion of United States settlers into the Western territories. I'm going to be doing a separate video going into a little more detail on the Curiosity Chronicles curriculum itself and how I use it, so I'll just leave that there. I am thinking about starting a book of centuries with my fifth grader and possibly my third grader. Um, my understanding is that Charlotte Mason did start this around fifth grade, um, and it's just a book. Um, I, I haven't decided if we're doing it yet, so I don't I don't have one to physically show you right now. But but essentially each two page spread is one century and one side either has boxes or lines for each year in that century and the other side is blank. And the idea is that you would write some of the things down that happened in that century. You're not covering everything. It's not supposed to be like a totally inclusive thing. And then you draw something that um, kind of piqued your interest from that time period uh, on the blank page. So I'm thinking about it. I have to figure out exactly how we would incorporate it. And I'm not sure if it might just be too much on top of everything else. So that's my, <laughs> maybe, maybe we might be doing a book of centuries. Our next family subject is science and we will be doing chemistry this year. So I am diving back into Real Science Odyssey by Pandaya Press and I'm going to be doing their chemistry curriculum. I've tried some of their curriculums in the past and using them exactly as written hasn't really worked for me. So I am ahead of time adjusting some things. This is another thing that I intend on doing a separate video on. Uh, I intend to do a flip through of the Real Science Odyssey chemistry curriculum and then share a couple of add-ons that I'm including. So I have some extra books. This is an example of a reference book we'll be using. I'm hoping to include more books and I also got some fun, a fun Adams kit that I will share with you in that video. So if that's something that piques your interest and you want to know more, make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell so you get notified when I put that video up. Next is geography. This past year we did Europe. Uh, so we learned where all the countries were in Europe. And then we also read a book on Europe and did some country reports. And I'm planning on doing something similar this year, but we're going to do the Americas, both North and South America. Um, so I did, I haven't laminated them yet. Um, I printed out some black line maps. I'm doing this video a little bit earlier than I have in some past years. And I actually am missing a few of the details in some of these. And so here I haven't actually figured out yet what book or books we'll be doing that coincide with this. So I'm still doing some research on that. Hopefully it will be a chapter book that's engaging. And we might also incorporate some more um, like artists and such from the area, especially from Latin America. As I said, we did Europe in the past and a lot of artists that we cover end up being European because we, that's where a lot of the resources are. 
the classical canon of artists that you study. So I'm hoping to get some more Latin American um, artists in there probably, probably some music and um, some food as well. I'm thinking of it a little bit like a unit except I might spread it out a little bit more if that makes sense. So that's, that's what I'm thinking for geography, North and South America. Next, artist study. So we've been doing artist study and composer study for years actually. In this past year, we did a rotation where we did um, an artist, then a composer, and actually then a Shakespeare play. And the first time we did it, we actually did a little bit of a, a writer study, an author study on Shakespeare as well. Instead of doing 12 weeks on an artist and a composer simultaneously, which is what I believe Charlotte Mason recommended, I tried doing uh, shorter bouts of time and one at a time. So we're gonna do that again because that worked pretty well. So I do an artist and I focus on them for a couple weeks and try to do it a couple days a week. Um, and then I do a composer, same thing. And then I do um, a Shakespeare play. So that's my plan again. Um, I have a really long list of artists right now and I'm gonna need to narrow it down a bit. Um, so we, I'll just, you can glance at that. That's what my current list looks like. Um, and some of these, I mean, I can just push them to the next year in the future and some we'll probably end up skipping. I am debating doing an impressionism unit, but I think that probably won't happen this academic year. Some of the resources I use for this is um, some Charlotte Mason picture study guides. Um, so I've used these ones in the past. These are um, the picture study portfolios from Simply Charlotte Mason. This is on Constable. I really like, um, I really like his stuff. <laughs> and these come, these come with nice quality pictures um, on like sturdy cardstock. And then they have a book. And in the book, there's like a guide on how to teach um, on how to teach artist study and picture study. They also usually have a biography of the artist. Um, and then they'll have information on each of the pictures included. So, um, so that you can see which picture it is and it tells you the name and just a little, a little bit of information on it. So I find that part of it, especially that last part, really, really helpful. I do like to find picture book biographies or other relevant picture books. And I like to use those either instead of or in addition to the biography in the picture study. And just a note, most of my curriculum is secular. Simply Charlotte Mason is not. Um, and I don't think it really affects this other than sometimes in the biographies it comes across that it's from a Christian perspective. Um, most of the artists that they cover are also Christian, so. I feel like it kind of makes sense. And then I'm trying this one. This is from a humbleplace.com and this is their picture aid, um, it's picture study aid on Hokusai. I wanted to try to include some non-Europeans in there and it's, um, I don't think, I don't think the Simply Charlotte Mason ones have any, but similar to the Simply Charlotte Mason guides, this has recommendations on how to use it. And then it has a little biography in here. And this is uh, from Hokusai, the old man mad with a painting. So I like that they have their sources in there. Um, oh, I should mention the other one as well has some, uh, often has book recommendations when, where, where they're available. And then it will also have these. And I think I have the pictures printed out separately. I got this, um, this is a digital guide, so I, I did have to print these myself. We do composers in a similar way. I do have some resources for those as well. This past year, we did like a general overview of classical pieces, um, and we used a squilt guide, which I'll show you. I have another one here to show you um, in a minute. And then we did, I think, Vivaldi and Handel. So we did a couple of composers, and I had some still on my list from last time, um, especially Bach and Mozart, so we'll be starting with Bach and then Mozart. Let me show you the resources I have on Composer Study in case you wanna look at it. Um, I mentioned before Squilt, it's super quiet, uninterrupted listening time. This is their Composer Spotlight on Bach. They have a few Composer Spotlights, but then they also have um, ones that are on the, the era, so like we did their classical era guide. And there's quite a bit in here actually. Um, there's notebooking pages, and it goes through like the different elements that you're listening for. So, um, see if I can remember. 
we've been doing this for a while I should be able to so we listen for the instrumentation which instruments are being used the dynamics which are like the louds and softs mostly the tempo which is essentially how fast it's going and then um, the mood we listen for the mood which is like how does it make you feel so that's in general we do in our composer study this guides you through that and it also has um, suggestions for different pieces to listen to each week um, there are how many pieces are in here? There are three pieces highlighted in here, um, and it'll tell you a little bit about the piece and things to note with your children. There's also like some copy work and stuff in here as well. So these are really helpful. I'll have the site link below so you can check them out. It's probably overkill to have both of these for Bach, but I also wanted to try Simply Charlotte Mason's music study with the masters. Um, so I have that too. This actually comes with CDs, which is nice. Um, so we have CDs in there that we can just like put on during the day as well. And then it goes into a light, little bit of a biography and then similarly has like pieces listed, the ones on the CD I presume, and a little bit on those pieces that you can note with your kids. So, oh, there's a little, there's a little cheat sheet to common musical terms back here too. So if you really, don't have any um, musical experience and you want to do composer study with your children, I think this one, Squilt is really good too, um, but this one might be even more useful uh, just as far as language goes. I also wanted to mention, uh, I was I was looking at composers to do and we, we again, as I said, we're going to start with Bach and I want to do Mozart. But then what I was thinking about doing is actually doing an opera unit. And so um, pulling in um, different famous operas from uh, composers that are known for their operas and so I don't know I think we'll probably still do Mozart separately um, but we'll put like do like the magic flute is a really famous Mozart opera that we'll do um, I, I, I started making some notes that I don't necessarily have done here but some something by Puccini of uh, maybe Wagner and just um, maybe reading the story for each of those operas as well as listening to some of the most famous pieces I think I think that could be really fun so um, I'm still kind of formulating that but that's an idea I had to do after we do Mozart and then for Shakespeare, I usually use this. This is an um, stories from the plays. This is not the original language. And then I try to do passages. We did try reading, um, when we were doing Midsummer Night's Dream, we did try reading through the Shakespeare language of the play. Um, but it ends up being like a, a one woman show in me and it's just a little exhausting and I'm not sure they were following. So I kind of changed tacks and I'm like, I'm going to do what I did this past year, which is I read the story in here. I believe this has all of the different plays in it. And they're just like in short story form. So it starts with this kind of cool picture at the front of each one that kind of goes through all the characters. And then it's just it's like a chapter book, but each chapter is a Shakespeare play. So um, this has been really useful for us. And then if I can, um, I chose ones that were easy to find videos for uh, last year. So we did... Uh, we did Much Ado About Nothing and we did Hamlet. So we ended up watching the videos of those as well. And for Hamlet, I also had them watch The Lion King and compare. So that was fun. I'm not 100% sure this year. Some ideas we have are Merry Wives, Merry Wives of Windsor, The Tempest, Twelfth Night, and Henry V. So those are some ideas. We won't get to that many, so we'll have to figure out what our priorities are. That is Artist, Composer, and Shakespeare. My next subject is Literature. I need to work on my lists for this. We didn't get to as many of this past year as I had thought we would. Um, so I still have some that were on my list from last year. So, um, and I have some of them here. I actually pulled out this pile to show you some of the options. Um, I do want to look for some probably historical fiction options um, to go with our some of our history. And as I've noted before, probably at least one book on uh, that takes place in South America that kind of gives us a flavor of that. Um, but uh, these are some different things here. We have the Vanderbeekers Lost and Found. We love the Vanderbeekers. This just happens to be the next one in the series of where we left off. Wonder. This was highly recommended to me by a family member. So um, that's on the list. We've got Pax, which I think is about a fox. Green Glass House. I think this is a mystery. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, and this is the Penderwicks at Point Moet. I think that's how you say that. This is the, I think the third on the, in the Penderwick series because we've done two so far. 
Um, we also very much enjoy the Penderwicks. Um, I would say that like I turn to this and the Vanderbeekers for stuff that's a little bit more light, especially if we've done something on the heavier side. So yeah, we may not do all these and I will most definitely add more, but this just gives you an idea of some of the ones I have waiting to be read. Let me talk about art for a few minutes. So my fifth grader is actually going to be doing a drawing curriculum on her own. And I will talk about that more in her individual subject video. Um, but as a group, I've been working on our rhythm or routine, and I am working on making sure we're doing art more often because it is something that we all love to do. Um, so it needs to be focused on more. So this is something that's gonna be joint most of the time with the um, older kids in the preschool. So I might get into a little bit more detail with it in the preschool video, but in general, I plan on rotating mediums. So we all love to paint. There's uh, Everybody has their own watercolor sets. I find that the easiest for them to use and for me to clean up. Um, but we also do have like the tempura washable paints um, that I use the little ones and I might I might let the older two kind of experiment with acrylic a little bit this year but then we also love sculpting with clay and I'd also like to add in more things like collage um, collage just drawing maybe using some pastels yeah and so I have several books I have our artistic pursuits books which are um, I've generally used linked with our artist study as well as our time period that we're studying. So I will, I will continue to do that. Just general exploration with different mediums is my goal. Next is nature journaling. This is another thing that I absolutely love to do, um, but has kind of fallen off the last couple of years. So I'm again in our routine, making sure we have a specific time when we are doing it. Um, my goal is two to three times a month. Connected with our preschool curriculum, we're going to have some themes going on in there. Some of the themes are nature-based, and I'm hoping that um, about once a month, um, the, the older two will also will just pull in that theme to do a nature study um, on that. I'm also hoping to get back into our monthly colors and observations, and I'm also hoping to incorporate some more of looking at the night sky and the stars and recording what we see there in our nature journals. And these are our, this is mine, <laughs> my cover, nature journals, and we, again, we've fallen off on using them a little bit, so we have plenty of space, so I think we'll just use what we do have. Um, the, my current four-year-old, I think, actually just kind of scribbled on most of her pages, and my current two-year-old doesn't have one yet, so I might get them new ones. I might get them the smaller version of this, we'll see, um, so that everybody has their own. With the little ones, uh, what we're really practicing is is actually just going through the book in order and drawing in order. So um, I have a couple videos on nature journaling, so I will link them here so you can get more details if you want. Two subjects left. So I am supposed to, according to my state, teach uh, PE, physical education, and health. And it's really not like a huge requirement. Generally, you just like do something, take a picture of it, it's fine. This year, I want to be a little bit more intentional about PE. My kids do just like run around a lot and they bike and, um, and such, but um, I haven't really done something intentional and I want to make sure that when they're in a situation where they're asked to do a, like one of the basic exercises like jumping jacks or push-ups, that they know how to do that. So I'm going to be working on that a little bit more. My son did baseball this past year and I think he's probably going to do it again. Um, and so I want to incorporate some practice in that. I'm trying to come up with some exercises we can do on that inside as well because it's really cold like right up until the season starts even the beginning of the season it's very cold um so it's harder to practice that outside and the season's so short so yeah we need to to work on some of those skills and we need to have more stuff to do inside um i did mention in a recent video when i was doing my wrap-up video that i was thinking maybe doing some yoga or something and uh, one of you had suggested cosmic kids yoga which i had forgotten about and is a great suggestion we did that years ago and my kids enjoyed it so we'll probably try to do that a little bit more again um we might we have like these yoga cards that my kids enjoyed at some point and then i also might try to do some like indoor obstacle courses or something not that's not like an everyday or an every week thing just like an every once in a while when the feeling strikes me. So that's my thought on PE. For health, I thought I would address drugs because, um, yeah, that's something you do in health class. And I actually found some really cool resources on the NIH, which is National Institutes of Health. Their website has like a Mind Matters program and it goes through, it has like videos and stuff 
on how different drugs affect your mind and how it works. And I thought that was really interesting. So um, we might just do a couple of those sprinkled throughout the year. My lighting just drastically changed because a storm just rolled in. So that's why I might look a little different, but I'm actually done with all the subjects. I know it's a lot. I am inspired by Charlotte Mason and she says to spread a feast of all the different subjects for your children. So that is what I like to do. Again, this is the first of a series. So I will be covering the individual subjects for my fifth and my third grader. And that's things like reading, writing, math, then I will also be talking more about my preschool plan and uh, some toddler school things that I'll be doing with my youngest. And as I mentioned, some specific topic videos such as history and science. If any of that seems interesting to you and you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. Until then, I hope you and your families are all well. Bye.